Hello, and welcome to another XPro tutorial for SOLIDWORKS. In this video, we are going to cover some basic sketch tools. We are going to check the relations we can use between them, as well as to see how to fully define sketches. Let's begin with the selecting a new part, and then please notice that I'm using millimeters, grams, and seconds. Also, if you go down here in the bottom right corner, you can change your options to be the same as the ones I use. Standard sketch tools that we use for modeling in SOLIDWORKS and overall for sketching can be found here in the upper left corner of the tab called Sketch. Here you have this Start Sketch button. This is actually for 2D sketches, which we will be covering in this tutorial. If you open the drop-down menu, you can also find 3D sketches, which is something we will use in the next tutorials. The next thing you have here is Smart Dimensions for adding dimensions to the sketch or on the sketch segments. Also, you have the sketch tools such as a line circle, spin rectangle, and an arc ellipse. We have slots, a polygon, and a sketch fillet. The rest of the mushroom convert entities and offset, which will be shown in some other tutorials. Once you open a new project in SOLIDWORKS, you get these three default planes. Before we start sketching, let me just show you something. I will, for example, draw a circle on the front plane. I'll make it 20 millimeters and I will extrude it by 50. Here in the Sketch tab, you cannot sketch on a surface that is not flat, so you can only sketch on flat surfaces or planes. Let me show you how. If you right-click on this flat surface here, you will see that I have this Sketch button. If I do the same on this cylindrical surface, this round surface, I cannot find the button. You also have this one, which is similar, but actually, this is an added sketch. It's not the same thing. Editing the sketch will bring us to the starting sketch I used for excluding this cylinder. Once again, you can only use flat surfaces or planes for the sketching in SOLIDWORKS. I will delete this sketch and this cylinder. Now, let's see how you can start sketching in SOLIDWORKS. First of all, you need to select a plane or a surface on which you want to draw your sketch. There are three ways of doing this. For the first one, go to the Sketch tab, select the Sketch button, and select one of the planes or surfaces if you have them on which you want to sketch. For example, I will click on the front plane. I will show this plane just for you to see it. I will hover over here in the design tree, press right click, and click on this I button which says show. Now we can see the borders of the front plane we are drawing on. How do you know that you are in draw mode or sketch mode though? Simple. You see here where you have this sketch, arrow symbol, and a large red X. When you click on X, you will exit sketch mode. The other way you can enter sketch mode is by right-clicking here in the design tree on any of the planes you want to use. For example, front plane, right-click, and you have this sketch button. The third one is directly in the modeling window, right? Click on the surface or plane you want to sketch on. We will do this now, right? Click sketch and immediately go back to this plane. We can sketch how each one of these commands can be activated in the same way. For example, I will select the line, the two ways you can actively use the commander left click, then release it, drag, and left click again. Another way to do it is to just hold left click and release when you're finished. Make sure you go to the settings in general tab and uncheck this, which means single command per pick. This is what will happen if I leave it, click, and then release it, click again, and the command will continue. If I hold the left click and release, you see, it doesn't continue. But if I go to Settings, go to General, and check this single command per click, look what happens. I will activate the line and start drawing. It doesn't matter if I'm holding it or left-clicking and then releasing it, it will always stop the command after I do one line. However, this is not very convenient for modeling. I will go back to Settings and uncheck this single command per pick, the same thing for all the other commands. For example, Circle, left-click, release, drag, and then left click again. We see that it stays in the circle command, and if I drag while holding left, it keeps it this way. Now, let's go back to a line that we will be covering in this tutorial. Let's say I left clicked, released, then dragged and left clicked again. As we showed previously, it continues drawing another line and so on. If I want to interrupt this command, I can start drawing. I am dragging and just double clicking. It persists in the line command in being active, but it's released from this. Now I can start drawing again. However, if I start drawing and now press escape, 
I will stop the line command. You can use drag without releasing the left click as a result of having this way of drawing. You will not have a continuous line, only a single line. When you open this, you will have three different lines. The standard one, a center line, and a midpoint line. Let's go and draw a standard line. As you can see, it is drawn either from left to right or from right to left, from one to the other in simple words. And I will double click to end it. The other one is the center line. And it works the same way, except it is not a full line. It is an interrupted line. We have a midline that is being drawn from the center outwards. You have this additional point in the middle too. This is the difference between these three lines. But the thing which is changing, if I delete all of them, is this. If you use a standard line or a midpoint line, both continuous lines, I will draw a shape and close this contour. You see that after I close the contour content, it changes color. But if I use a center line and do the same thing, after closing the contour, nothing changes in it. This means that only full lines and standard lines can be used for features such as extrude boss and so on. You can see also that when I start extruding, it will only affect the standard line. The center line will not be extruded, even if I draw it here inside of this contour, and once again, features extrude, and you see everything, it's the same. You use center lines only as a help line to position something or to get symmetrical relations between standard lines. They are just here to help us have good sketches. I'll draw another standard line here. If I want to change this line to a center line, I can do this simply by left clicking on it and then on icon that says construction geometry. I also have this option over here in the design tree online properties. It says for construction, but once again, I will left click on it or right click on it. Doesn't matter. You will have this quick menu here. You can click on the construction line. If I draw a center line, I can do the same thing. But in the other direction, right click or left click the same thing. I'll click here and I make it a standard full line. This is the way you can switch back and forth between center lines and standard lines. Let's draw another line right here. We see that it holds a point on its ends on both ends. If I hover over the middle of it, a yellow square appears, which also indicates the middle of this line. What can I do with these points? So they are basically here to help us connect this line to something else. For example, if I draw another line over here, I can use its point and drag it to this one like that. And now they are connected or like one more line, which I can hold here in full control. Click on this and also click on make coincidence. Now, I have successfully connected this line with its endpoint to the middle of this line here. For now, let's draw a couple of lines and see what relations I can add between them, which can help me sketch them in SolidWorks by holding control and selecting them. I will get a quick menu here, which will give me several options. For instance, I can make both of them either horizontal or I would just go backward once I can make them vertical or even collinear. Now you can see that they are in one line. Let's go backward, click on the control, and select both of them. I can see that they are perpendicular. Ops, I lost the other line. By the way, if you lose some part of the sketch or three-dimensional models on the screen, you can double-click the scroll mouse and it will zoom out so that you can see everything you have drawn or modeled. Now I can move the line back to the area I was looking at before. Now you can see that these two lines are perpendicular. I can make this line, for example, vertical. Now it's clearer how these two are perpendicular. Now when I click on this line, it will show me all the relationships it has in this sketch. The only one is being perpendicular to this line here. You see they both have this small 8 beside the perpendicular sign. If I click on this line here, it will also show me the perpendicularity and it would be vertical. I can pull this point here and drag and drop it to this point. Then let's draw another line and drag it over here. Let's draw another one that can be connected anywhere here on this line. But if I want this line to be exactly in the middle of the vertical one, I can, for example, draw another one and say this point. And this line has to be a midpoint. Now, I am sure that this line is in the middle of the vertical one. Or let's draw something like this. Hold this. And, for instance, in this one, Let's just say that this is a coincidence. Now I can move this one even. So it will always be in the line. This horizontal one. Essentially, there are two ways of adding relations. One way is using drag and drop, for example. Making these two coincidental, holding control and selecting two lines, and then adding a relationship. You can see it fits. Let's make a shape here and close the contour. Over there. We can see that we have some lines that are blue in color and points too. 
This means that they are not defined. This means that if I hold this point here, I can drag it. Also here, everything that is blue can be moved. Here in the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see that the sketch is underdefined. If I want to see what relationships I have in this sketch, I can either go and select each line individually and see what's going on. Or I can right click and say, display or delete relations in the drop down menu. There are several options. But in this tutorial, we will just use everything in this sketch. I can see that I have two horizontal relations, one vertical and one perpendicular. Let's delete all of this and click OK. Now we have a completely underdefined sketch. But it is very important in SolidWorks to have fully defined sketches. Let's see what happens after I start adding relationships to the scratch. To show you an example, I will drag this and connect it to the origin. I can add a horizontal relation to this line, and two, this one can be vertical. This line and this line are parallel. This line and this line are perpendicular. Let's see if there is some other relationship we can add over there. Now you see that some of the lines have changed color. Also, some of the points and lines are now black. They are not blue anymore. This is also black, which means that if I hold it, it says you cannot drag it because this item is fixed. It's fully defined. The sign cannot be moved anywhere, but it can be extended because of this. Here is blue as this is too. I have to define this cache by using smart dimensions in the tab. Cache select smart dimensions. Let's add a dimension to the D sign. Let's say it's 30 millimeters. This one will be 60. We can say that from here to here, we have 45. Now, let's see what's going on with the sketch. This one point is now black. This one is still blue. Let's see here. I can still move these lines upwards and downwards. We can add some sort of dimension in degrees, let's say, 30 degree. And I can still move this. I can either say that this line is, for example, 30. This will fully define the sketch, or I can say that this line is 50. Now, we see that all the points and all the lines are black. In the bottom right corner, it is stated that this sketch is fully defined. I'll just extend this plane a bit so that it doesn't bother us. Now I can extrude this closed contour by going to features.extrude. From there, I can select mid-plane 10 degree. We see that we have some sharp edges here. We can change this directly in the sketch by right-clicking, clicking on the boss, and editing the sketch. You can either select two lines or just a point. But before we do that, let's add some sort of filler dimension like 15. I will select this as well. You can confirm this command either by clicking the right click on the mouse or clicking up here. Now it brings you to another new sketch fillet. We don't need it. So we'll close the command. Now after exiting the sketch here, you can see that the extrude was in the D model as an affiliate. Let's go back to editing our sketch and just delete this dimension here. I can see this line with this one is equal. You see? Now I have a problem here. It says that something is wrong and that my sketch is overdefined. I added a relation that is overdefining my scratch. I can either delete this one or I can delete it the parallel and see what happens. Now the only way this sketch can work is if these two lines are not parallel, they are equal. They cannot be parallel. This is because I have this perpendicular relationship. Now maybe I can change it. They can be parallel. Now the schedule looks a bit different. Again, to fully define the sketch, I will just add this dimension here. Let's say this is 50. This is it for this tutorial and the next one we will continue with the rest of the sketch tools. I hope you like this video. See you in the next one. Bye.